Um, I've been emphasizing that actually coaching is very, very simple, and the simpler it is, the better. And I believe that there are two key roles, two key aspects to, to coaching, which are the, the things that make the difference. And the first one is raising awareness. We discussed this morning, if you change somebody's perception of a situation, then their behavior and response will change automatically. Unlike training, we don't need to teach people what to do. If we change the perception, we change, raise their awareness, then the likelihood is they'll automatically adjust to the situation as they now perceive it. So a key part of the coaching process is raising awareness. However, coaching is normally in a context of achieving something. It might be nice to change, that's definitely going to be valuable to you in the future, but it will also be nice actually if you were to achieve something. So, the other aspect of coaching is to do with goals. So, setting goals, we hear a lot about goal setting and so on, if you relate the awareness to the goals, then part of the role is actually to clarify the goal. When you've clarified the goal, then it's fit to set the goal. There's no point setting the wrong goal. And very often people decide what they want without really going into enough detail. So we can raise the awareness in the situation, but also help people to raise awareness as to what it is they want to achieve. That will then help us to set the goal. And something that the coach could also do is to provide some element of accountability. Very often just the fact that you know somebody is expecting something of you will in ensure that you actually get on with it. So if you've agreed that I will do so and so by Friday afternoon, even if the coach doesn't ring on Friday afternoon to check, you've still got this sense that actually I'm conscious, I'm committed, I've made a public uh, decision and I'm accountable. So raising awareness, clarifying, setting goals and being accountable really you've got the essence of coaching in those two concepts. However, as ever, there are some extras. And what, what I have identified is seven things which affect the effectiveness of the coach uh, in the terms of how they're working. Seven things which are really key to being effective as a natural coach. And it so happens they all begin with C. So we call this uh, sailing the seven seas. So the first C is that of connection. This is to do with building the rapport, setting up the situation, and making an emotional and an intellectual connection with the person that you're coaching. There's no point just making a comment or something if they're not listening. No point if they're listening but they're not really paying attention. So actually creating a, a safe situation in which uh, there's a relationship, the first step before you can achieve anything. The second quality which I believe is really, really important is that of caring. And we came up with the exercise about feedback this morning, I think, didn't we? That actually the way the feedback is given is quite important. So I think it's really important that we don't just do the job, but there is this real sense of caring for the well-being and caring for the success of the person that you're working with. And uh, one of the things I've noticed over my uh, years is when I get a bill from a professional services, particularly from a solicitor, they will add at the bottom all the bills and at the bottom it will say care and attention. Well, I don't expect to pay for care and attention, I expect that. What I would like them to say is caring and attention and it's very rare that I get that from a solicitor. And the caring is what makes the difference and since coaching is about a relationship, I think it's key. Yeah. So the next C stands for clarity and part of the problem in life is that we go through a certain amount of fog. We do things without being too specific and part of the raising of awareness is really to clarify what the situation, to bring real clarity to where you are and what you want to do. So. The th next C is curiosity. 
And I believe that, that the caring is one of the things that distinguishes a real coach. And I believe that the curiosity is another thing which distinguishes a real coach. Somebody who has this sense of curiosity, really wanting to understand and find out and interested in these things, don't need to know any skills and so on. Your curiosity will motivate you and direct you, particularly will direct you along the process. So curiosity, I believe, is really, really important for a coach. So those would be very nice. And in different situations, there are different things that we need. And very often it's drawing things out and giving positive feedback and all these sorts of things are very nice. But there are times when actually we need to challenge somebody. We need to put them on the spot and help them to face up to something. So challenging and stretching somebody is something which I think you should take in as being an acceptable part of being a coach. It's, it's all very well being nice, but sometimes within the context of caring, sometimes um, you can challenge and stretch and uh, help people confront. The next C is confidence, and there are two meanings to confidence. The first, which is important, is that you have confidence in the ability, the resources of the person that you're coaching, and you have confidence that we can achieve success out of whatever it is we're doing, and also you have confidence in yourself, because as I've said earlier, these things leak out. So if you are exuding confidence in yourself and in the process and in the person you're coaching, that will give you a very powerful context in which to make change. However, there is another part which is of great importance, and that is to do with confidence in the context of confidentiality. It's the willingness to respect the situation we're in and to respect the fact that we may be dealing with sensitive, more commercially sensitive or emotional, emotionally risky things. But whatever it is, it is in a situation of confidentiality. So uh, this is to do with behavior, this is more to do with ethics. But it, obviously, if they don't have, if there isn't a sense of trust, then you won't have all of these other things. And then the seventh C is that of commitment. And again, this can have two meanings. I am committed to you. I am committed to the success of the process. I'm committed to how this goes on and so on. But also, I expect you to make a commitment to the goals that you're setting. And also, I am also committed to supporting you in the goals that you're setting. So just to review, the key process of coaching really is helping people to raise their awareness. <coughs> and the outcome very often is to set new and clear and specific goals. And these seven C's will assist you in being an effective and, and successful coach. So the first one is to make a connection with the person you're working with. The second one is really to care for the well-being of that person and for the, for the process. To uh, focus on achieving clarity in all, to be specific, what is it that we're looking for? Can we be absolutely clear what it is? To be driven by curiosity, to be prepared to challenge, to show confidence in the process and the resources and the ability, and to respect confidentiality, and to be committed to the process, to the person that you're working with, and to expect commitment from them for their goals. So there we have a, a simple model um, of the, what I think is the fundamentals of coaching.